John Murphy with all good wishes from Mr. and Mrs. H.A. Hull. May 1916. This is John Murphy. He's a passionate skier and his roots run deep in the New Zealand skiing community. Like yeah, that's my dad. Yeah, that's it. And the two oh. aunties, yeah. They've just got lots of zinc on their face. Okay. Now, while we're looking at all this memorabilia, Janina, mm -hmm. this is of great interest because this is a book written by legendary mountaineer Frida Fuhrer. She was a fascinating character. She was a, a lady mountaineer in an era when it was a male domain. Yeah. But she showed the boys that she could basically hack it with them and go anywhere. What's the book called? Now, so the book here is Ooh. called The Conquest of Mount Cook. Oh, wow. By Frida Dufour. Frida Dufour was the first woman to climb Mount Cook. She was kind of unapologetically unstoppable. Like, there were so many people that told her that she was mad, that she was doing the wrong thing, that it was inappropriate for her to be there pushing the limits as she was. Seeing that book and seeing all the photos in the scrapbooks that he has of all these females really gave me the inspiration and motivation to do the trip with Ayako and Anna. Not just do a little film trip, but really lay it out on the line and, yeah, sign up for a good old suffer fest. Only a hill. Earth set a little higher, above the face of Earth. A larger view of little fields and roads, a little nigher to clouds and silence. What is that to you? Only a hill. But all of life to me. Up there between the sunset and the sea. Plotting our route, we were super excited to see that we would be almost following in Frida's footsteps throughout Mount Cook National Park, going from east to west over the Great Divide. Flying in to the Murchison Glacier at the bottom of the Liebigs and passing all these glaciers on the way really gave us an idea of what we had put ourselves into and it just showed that these glaciers are receding so fast because we had to fly so far in just to help us access the Murchison Glacier. Kind of, I think, shocked the team a little bit of what was ahead of us. So it was pretty big country that we're going into, a lot of exposure, glacial terrain that I'm not very experienced in. My own limitations probably in that terrain is my biggest concern. I think I'm fit enough to finish my trip and I train for this, but it's gonna be my first ski tour of the year, so I'm still worried about that. Snow condition, I thought it's gonna be a lot, like a lot softer, because it's spring, but it's not. <laughs> Our original plan was to hike from the Liebig Range to the Murchison Glacier, camp on the Murchison Glacier and get some really cool ski footage on Sydney King and Phyllis and then head up to Kelman Hut. But um, because we knew the weather was coming in really fast, there was one of the biggest storms was about to hit New Zealand in September and we just had to get to Kelman Hut. So we just put our heads down and just walked continuously all the way until we got to Kelman Hut that night.
we are down climbing to get to the bottom of the Murchison Glacier. We still need to walk over a little bit more scree, which is really tough. And it's really hot. So we got to the bottom of the Murchison Glacier and when we put our skis on, we were two hours behind schedule because Ayako was having really bad boot problems. I just walked all, the, all day from back there to here and I've now realized that I do not have a right boot and we're still halfway through the rock. I thought we're gonna be ski touring, not walking on the rocks. At that point, I really had concerns that the whole trip was in jeopardy. We're six hours in and the trip was already falling apart. We've walked a very long way. It's just tough. It's tough to see her, she's in agony. Day one turned into a 14 and a half hour suffer fest. It was quite stressful. It was physically arduous and a really long day, but I think it was more the worry of being out on the Murchison head wall, which has like all those glacial kind of terrain hazards. All of the challenges that we had been considering pre-trip definitely became a reality with the weather chasing us through it every moment. There were tears and there were times when we were really short with each other, but we made it to the hut safely and that's all that counts. Yeah, how do you feel? Good. Ready for bed? 11, oh my God. And we started hiking it before nine, for sure. We made it. Hark. Fast by the window, the rushing winds go to the ice-cumbered gorges, the vast sea of snow. There the torrents drive upward, their rocks strangled hum. There the avalanche thunders, the hoarse torrent dumb. I come, O ye mountains, ye torrents, I come. After reaching Kelman Hut, we were stuck in the hut for two days. Just insane weather, constantly having to dig out the hut due to snow blocking the door, having to pee in the black bucket. There's a pee bucket that we just, everyone's been pissing in and we have to go empty it with 100k winds outside. It was really nice to uh, be able to sleep for the next two days and just relax and learn some new skills and rope skills. It was really cool. Only a hill. Yes, looked at from below. Facing the usual sea, the frequent west. Tighten the muscles, feel the strong blood flow and set your foot utmost crest. There, where the realms of thought and effort cease, wakes on your heart a world of dreams and peace. we were able to sort of go out with fresh legs and really get stuck into the next big objective, which was getting over um, the Rudolph. I think it's gonna be a little hairy, what do you reckon? I am feeling pretty excited about hiking over the Rudolph Col today. It's the gnarliest uh, part of our trip and where we go east to west over the Great Divide. Skiing down Tasman Glacier, it's just an amazing long ski run where you can actually ski through some really cool ice features and we definitely took advantage of that. After the storm, we're expecting a metre of fresh powder. Um, that's what the dock rangers had said over the radio, that a metre of snow was going to fall and we got outside and it was compressed icy, dense snow. And 
we're all super excited to get out after going a bit mad with cabin fever. Um, expecting, you know, a good meter of snow. A lot of snow. Yeah. And now we only have five centimeter of fire. Yeah. Right here. So we're all expecting the most outrageous power today, but it's been blown to shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seeing Ayako's reaction to the compressed wind pack snow was just hilarious. She was like, where's all the powder? We had terrible snow conditions for the whole entire trip. It was concrete hard. <laughs> It's really special to me to look around and see um, places such as the Bull Glacier where there's been all this history of the original New Zealand mountaineers and the ski races that happened there. It's, it's really cool for us to see kind of where it all started and um, yeah, I guess also a bit sad because perhaps that's not quite possible anymore. We might need some new skis when we get home. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys down there that's Bull Pass and that's uh, where Bull Glacier is and you can see how much it's retreated. Hey guys, there's some rock fall coming down, okay? Oh, don't stop. Don't keep stop. Calm. keep coming, keep coming. I definitely felt the pressure to keep moving when we were in the um, down in the Rudolph and moving up towards the saddle of Mount Graham, there's a whole lot of terrain above you. You can see huge chunks of ice that is somehow in the middle of this huge valley and you know that it's gotten there by just rolling down the mountain and that it's not a place that you can stop. It was just super gnarly, like there was ice falling left, right, centre. Fall. And we were hiking up next to an ice fall and that's when um, Ayako started having problems again. Um, she was cramping, like crazy cramps in her thighs. I was like just freaking out just because I've never had it. I was just almost crying because I don't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. She continues and we're just so impressed by her capabilities just to get up onto the Rudolph Coal. And so you could see the pain in her eyes, but we're all at the top high-fiving. We just completed half the trip, so we're super excited. And you look out to the west coast and the ocean's just laid out before you. Sparkling gold it was really, truly amazing. It was so beautiful. We've come from the east and going to the west. And it's pretty special and the fact that we climbed up the root of coal and, and it might not be there, that place it might not be there in a couple of years. Yeah. So I think we're pretty, pretty lucky to find it. I certainly feel pretty lucky right now. <laughs> Woo! Eastward, in the skies of morning, rosy tinges streak the grey. Bars of crimson change to golden, glittering heralds of the day. Like a blood-red shield uprising, swims the sun on palest blue, crowns the hills with crests of splendour, flashes in the trembling dew. Far to eastward, far to northward, stretch the hills in purple chains. Far to southward, far to westward, waves the grass on yellow plains. Our plan at Centennial Hut was to do some really cool skiing and ski some lines around there, but there was a, another storm rolling in, so our, once again our ski plans were cut short. At this point, you know, it's just been in, an intense ski trip and uh, we're doing long days ski touring and I think by that stage myself and the girls, we just don't really care about skiing these lines that we came to ski because we just want to get from point A to point B safely. I was up here 10 years ago and skied some lines up, just up around there and it looks so different now. It's just crazy to see how much the glaciers have retreated and how fast they're melting. I just hope you know, we can do something about it so our kids can come up here one day and just ski the same lines we skied, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen.
I'm not too sure how Ayako was, you know, was thinking about the snow conditions that we've experienced on this trip so far, but I think at that point we really could see by the expressions on her face that this was just some of the most horrendous skiing that she's ever done. I'm a little bit nervous about this train. I'm not really happy with this, but we are making it through. Almost at the hut. It's crazy that that's the Tasman Glacier where we just skied through the other day, where we were battling moraine and hiking up and down huge pieces of rock. And this is the multi-run hut, which has actually been condem condemned and removed because of glacial recession. Down here, and then yeah, up, up, and then down. Chancellor. Yeah. Once we got to Chancellor Hut, our um, plan was to exit out the Fox Glacier by foot. And we knew there was a storm rolling in, so we had a limited time. We are about to kick off down the hill towards the bottom of Fox Glacier. Um, we've got Ben with us, who was here um, about five years ago, and the glacier has receded a good 800 metres since then, which is pretty terrifying. So I reckon we just go straight down the middle, and then when you see it start to fall over, uh, the ice fall will begin. That's the one part we really don't know what it's going to be like, so we'll just have to plan as we go. It seems too much like fate indeed. Though I do try my best, I shall scarce succeed. But what if I fail in my purpose here? It is but to keep the nerves at a strain, to dry one's eyes and laugh at a fall, and baffled, get up and begin again. So the chase takes up one's life, that's all. It wasn't really bushwalking, it was more like rock climbing through bush, lowering ourselves down rocks by little threads of flax and branches of trees and things like that. Skin knees, skinned elbows, bruises, just it was really rough country. And it kind of makes you feel like one of the New Zealand pioneers that arrives at this kind of wild place and you have to battle your way through. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. No. Pretty shitty climbing through the bush. And now we're going through a pretty sketchy area on the ice. Seeing Ayako's face just turn to white when she saw where we had to enter on the uh, ice. I guess we were going over this huge amount of glacier ice, I guess. Looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure. Said it. She definitely was was just as nervous as us, or even more nervous. <laughs> the entry point was just crevasses on each side, just gnarly ice, tiny little boardwalks where you would just no fall zones. Otherwise, you're falling into a crevasse. I've never felt that scared before in a, you know, probably in all the trips I've done, like that was the, the turning point where I was like, whoa, this is going to get gnarly. You'll just go around. I've never been that nervous, that scared. And I just remember turning around to Anna, just telling her that, I was scared and she just burst out laughing, saying, I'm glad you're saying that, Janina, because I'm shitting my pants. I'm scared. I'm shitting. I'm really scared. You're climbing up and down like tiny fins of ice and it feels quite exposed to me. Now you can step down onto the other one. Yeah. There you go. Ayako was in front of me on like a really narrow ice bridge. And there's like a crevasse there and a really deep crevasse there. And she just suddenly stops and looks super wobbly. 
out of nowhere, her face just turns white. We sort of grab onto her pack and then she just projectile vomits. It's like the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I felt really nervous. I have some trauma from my past years. I really do not want to fall down anything. I just couldn't do it from that point. I just couldn't walk from that point. I just have a freaking trauma. Sorry. Hey, it's OK. Yeah. It's OK. I'm like just feeling so sick and scared. She needs to take a heli back. Yeah. And it's only about 100 metres, OK? You're so close, Ayako. You're so close. You can get through this, OK? So I needed to go to the tourist heliport. And I got heli back from the tourist heli, which is kind of sad for me because I didn't make it to the end. The weather was coming in, it was already starting to rain. Um, and as we know, we're on the west coast where things can get pretty wild pretty quick. So we discussed whether or not to fly out, but um, Janina and I were pretty adamant that we wanted to exit on foot because the way that that glacier's drinking, perhaps it's the only opportunity that we'll have to do so. We are heading across the glacier on a little bridge over this huge wall where you can see just how much the glacier is shrinking. The storm came in, it was pouring with rain, and we had to walk out this area called the Bowling Alley, or Suicide Alley. This area, um, with its exposure to rock falling, is, it's just terrifying. At that point, Janina was moving really fast, um, and I think it was a pretty good indication of her sort of stress levels. Looking back, it was incredible to see all the glaciers that we crossed throughout Mount Cook National Park. When comparing them to John's photos, the amount that they've changed is mind-blowing. You can see it shrinking in front of you and it's, it's really sad, actually. I feel very fortunate to have exited out Fox Glacier. In the future, well, I, I don't think many people will be able to do that. Yeah, I'm just so glad I got to do that in my lifetime and experience it with that. such a rad crew. Oh, one sec. It'll come. Oh. Oh. One last ticket before it's gone. One last summer before it's fall. Tune your strings and play your cards Little words hit me like a game of darts And you're beating, beating on my drum And you're beating, beating on my door Riding fast to breathe.